pleased to have as my uh, first guest on our program today, uh, Frank Winsenberg. Frank's nice to have you. Thank you Frank is uh, operations director with, with special responsibility for transportation and asbestos and boating and all of the things that nobody else wants to do, Frank, I think, including for all of you viewers who have wondered who it is that makes the decision on when we call school off because of the weather, I have that man with me today. And I don't know if I told you this, Frank, but when I left my other superintendency, I had to do that myself, so I really appreciate the, that you take that heat now, and I thank you for that. Uh, Frank, I, I asked you on today to specifically talk a little about, uh, uh, about voting, school district voting, and they, we've probably just seen the most significant changes in, uh, in voting in our school district that perhaps we've seen. It involves for us a change of, uh, of uh, places, uh, precincts, uh, voting places, uh, absentee procedures, everything. It's just a complete, uh, right. a complete switch. And uh, I, it's a complex, uh, complex matter. And uh, uh, Frank has, has talked to our administrative cabinet many times, and I can assure you that there's just a mountain of material with this. It's very complicated. I don't know how all the municipality is going to handle it pleased that we got you to do it, Frank, and that you're on it. I, I think I'd like to start out by, by asking you to maybe to briefly summarize, uh, if you can briefly, the, the, the major changes and how it affects us. And I see you have a school district map here because it involves different voting places this year for us. So maybe if you just start out, give us an overview of what are the changes and, and if you can tell us why. Why did they fix a system that was allegedly working? I really don't know why. I okay. can't tell you that. Okay. Uh, previously, the school districts had been involved uh, in their own election laws. Uh, as of the 1st of July, 1988, we have to conform to Minnesota state election laws. So uh, uh, the biggest uh, change in, in that, uh, that that law brings is the fact that uh, the registration for our elections now come from Hennepin County. Okay. And uh, as a result, then we have to use their precinct systems and that's the reason that we had to change okay. our own precinct okay. uh, systems. Okay. And uh, as you're aware, we're, we will now be operating with three precincts of our own. And uh, the, uh, the main reason that uh, we decided on three is that it's, it'll just be easier to remember where they have to vote. Right. We had to uh, uh, go from 21 municipal precincts down to whatever would work best for us. So we decided on the three. So uh, here we have a map of the Wyzetta School District. The uh, uh, school district is now broken down into the three precincts. The first precinct is divided at uh, County Road 6 and 494. So everything south of County Road 6, west of 494 is precinct one. And those voters will be voting at Wyzetta City Hall that's at 600 Rice Street in Wyzetta. So then Precinct 2 will be everything north of County 6 and everything west of 494 in the Wyzetta School District. This includes uh, Plymouth, Medina, Corcoran, and the Maple Grove portions of the Wyzetta School District. Those voters will be voting at Peace Lutheran Church, and that's located at 3895 Highway 101 North in Plymouth. Then the remainder of the voters will all be west of 494. That's our precinct three, and those voters will be voting at Christ Memorial Lutheran Church, and that's located at 13501 Sunset Trail, and that also is in Plymouth. That's a, um, that's a significant change from the way we have been voting. We've been using our schools. Yes, we have. We've been using our elementary attendance areas, and also we've been voting in the uh, various elementary schools uh, of the attendance areas. And now we've changed that, so all of the voting that we have will be outside the schools. In a way, Frank, this could be better because we don't have the, uh, the cars in the parking lots that we have at our schools and we don't have the, 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 the number of kids uh, to contend with. Do you, do you expect that this will be shorter lines maybe and uh, easier access? I think that we, uh, we anticipate uh, uh, ch the change and uh, think that we're geared up now so that uh, we won't have any lines to contend with. We think that we'll be well staffed. And uh, uh, also I'd like to uh, refer to your comment uh, regarding the convenience uh, in the past 
it's been inconvenient for both the voters and the students in the schools. Yeah. And so uh, with only the elections going on in these three precincts, I think it'll be much more convenient for everyone. Frank, what, uh, what else are we going to do to get the word out to our voters? How else are we going to communicate this? Uh, there is a small reference made in the, uh, the communicator. This time that just came out okay. and uh, then more explicit information will be coming out in the May communicator just before the elections. Okay. We'll also have uh, additional information out in the three newspapers that are the official newspapers of the district. Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, what happens? Uh, what's changed with the absentee voter? Um, the uh, absentee voter has really not changed all that much. Um, the, uh, the only thing is that uh, a person um, um, may not hand deliver a ballot for another person. Okay. Uh, the, uh, there are two ways of voting absentee ballot. One is that a person can come into the school district administration uh, building on Highway 101 and register, in per, uh, register and vote in person. Uh, it's, it's a two-step process, but you can combine the two steps if you come in and do it in person. If you decide uh, that you can't do it in person, then it's a two-step process where you uh, either write or call asking us for an application for a ballot, and then as soon as we receive the application, then we must mail out the, uh, the absentee ballot uh, and the individual mails it back to us. All right, and we'll also communicate that again to the community. Yes, the yes, that'll be made very clear. It looks to me that for the uh, typical voter, uh, outside of identifying the different places to vote, it, it will be business as usual. That's about right. And, uh, and yet for us, I've seen the manual that's come out, and uh, Frank, it, it's, it's, it, it, isn't it true it's unbelievable? Yes, the original manual was 75 pages. The new manual that we have to abide by is 165. Just amazing. So, yes. I think someone once said, uh, I guess it was one of our early presidents, says, thank goodness you're not getting all the government you're paying for. <laughs> <laughs> and in the election uh, manual, it looks like we are. Uh, that's been very helpful, Frank, and I appreciate the, the map. That's, that's very clear. The other thing I would remind our viewers is that um, if over the years you've had any bus uh, problems uh, and you've called the district, the guy that you have dealt with, and you couldn't see him through the phone, but it's, it's my guest, Frank Winsenberg. And, uh, Frank, uh, the transportation uh, uh, business in this school district is, is something that people wouldn't perhaps see, sense when they see the bus come down the street, but it's an enormous uh, business, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, and uh, over the years that you've uh, been responsible for that, do you have any idea how many phone calls you've had to take to iron out bus stops or late buses or early buses or discipline problems on the bus? You not, can write a book, couldn't you? I like to think not very many. <laughs> well, probably not we, very many, but... We, we think we do a good job and really don't get very many calls. But we do do a good job, and, but it's a very big business, isn't well, it? Yes, it is, and uh, we've been fortunate enough to have some excellent contractors, too. And we're, we're very fortunate that our safety record has been very good. Yes. And, uh, and pupil transportation doesn't seem like a big deal until you have problems with it or until you have something go wrong. Yeah, and it's, that's, that's right. the whole deal then. So, so anyway, Frank is the person that uh, smoothly irons those out for you, and you should appreciate that, and we appreciate having you. Thank you, Frank. You're welcome. Appreciate you being with me.